welcome to the second part of the Paschal Retreats Online coming from the St. Benedict's Monastery here in Dicos Davao, the Philippines. Today, we shall reflect on Good Friday. So let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you for the gift of Jesus in our lives. Today, as we commemorate his death, we also relive his passion in which he revealed that God is a trinity. We ask our Blessed Mother and our Mother that she may bring us closer to the Paschal Mystery. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is the only day of the year when we do not celebrate Mass because today we commemorate the death of Jesus. Today, Jesus is dead. And as we relieve his passion and death, the church brings us back to that moment in Calvary where it happened 2,000 years ago. In the morning of Good Friday, Pilate sentenced Jesus to die by crucifixion. Jesus carried his cross to Calvary outside Jerusalem to the place of skulls where criminals of the day were thrown away and their bodies and skulls were kept rotting. At nine in the morning, Jesus was crucified. At 12 noon, there was total darkness. At three o'clock, Jesus died. From nine in the morning until three o'clock in the afternoon, Jesus spoke his seven last words. One, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Number two, today you will be with me in paradise. And the third word, woman, behold your son. Behold your mother. The fourth word, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The fifth, I thirst. The sixth, it is finished. And the seventh, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. What are these seven last words? Isn't it true that it took God seven days to create the world? And that He created the world by His Word? Now on the cross, Jesus, the Word of God made flesh, was recreating creation, a new order, a new genesis. And on the cross, Jesus was giving birth to the church. During the six hours that Jesus was hanging on the cross, he felt abandoned as he cried, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabachthani. In English, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Where were the apostles of Jesus during that time? With the exception of John, all of them fled. And where were his followers? Those who were recipients and those who, who saw his miracles. Where are those who sang Hosanna when he entered Jerusalem? All of them abandoned Jesus. At 12 noon, when darkness covered the earth because of a solar eclipse, nature was ashamed to look at her creator. Nature symbolically abandoned her creator. When everyone had abandoned Jesus, he knew someone 
would never abandon him, his father. But during this time when Jesus needed his father the most, the father abandoned him. If you were a parent, a father or a mother, watching your only child dying, would you even exchange places just to save your child? Or at least to be with your child to give him or her consolation? Where was the father who brought his son to the cross? God the Father did not stop his son, nor did he give him the consolation he needed, because that hour was the reason why Jesus became man, to offer himself as the supreme sacrifice to redeem humanity. And in this great drama of salvation, the Father was the one who abandons. The Son is the one who is abandoned. And the Holy Spirit is the one who connects the Father and the Son in their utter separation. So when we look at Jesus hanging on the cross, what do we see? We see love in its most beautiful expression on the cross charity is crucified the suffering and death of jesus is not just redemptive it is revelatory we see the deepest revelation of who god is the cross is the highest manifestation of the Trinity. On the cross, we see the Father begetting His beloved Son. On the cross, we see the Son being begotten. And on the cross, we see the Holy Spirit who is the begetting. So on the cross, we see the Trinity as suffering love. After these considerations, we now come to the reflections for today, Good Friday. During the times when we are alone, hungry, suffering in pain, in the midst of a tragedy, abused and maltreated, a victim of injustice and facing death, don't we call on God? And when we don't see lights even at the end of the tunnel, and we don't feel that God is answering our prayers, like Jesus, don't we feel abandoned by God? And when we look around, and we see nothing but pain, suffering, and death, don't we question the presence of God? In our desperate situation like today, don't we also cry, my God, my God, why have you abandoned us? But the response and the consolation of the Father it's not on Good Friday. Our sufferings, our deaths are not only redemptive, and like Jesus, they are also revelatory of the mysterious presence of God in the world. You think that evil has conquered goodness in the death of Jesus? Maybe, yes in the eyes of the world. But in the heart of God, it is victory. Jesus' life and our lives don't end on Good Friday. There is Easter awaiting for us. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.